Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using Kani's method. Before analyzing, let us see the frame one time. In this frame, there are two columns, column AB and column CD. Also, there is a beam BC. In the column AB, there is a point load 15 kN acting in the center. In the beam BC, there is uniformly distributed load 9 kN per meter. This load is acting for the full span. In the column DC also, there is a uniformly distributed load 6 kN per meter. This load is also acting for the full span. Height of column AB is 6 meter. Height of column CD is 4 meter. Length of the beam BC is 4 meter. The moment of inertia for the column AB is 3i. For the beam BC is 3i. And for the column CD is i. In this frame, in the point A, there is a fixed support and in the point D, there is a hinged support. This frame is a sway type frame. Now let us find the fixed end moments. First, let us find them in the column AB. In the column AB, there is a point load 15 kN acting in the center. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. Here W is 15 and the length is 6. When we apply the values in the formulas, we are getting M of AB and M of BA. Now let us find the fixed end moments in the beam BC. In the beam BC, there is UDL, 9 kN per meter, acting for the full span. The formulas for the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Here W is 9, L is 4. When we apply the values in the formulas, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. Now let us find the fixed end moments in the column CD. In the column CD also there is UDL 6 kN per meter acting for the full span. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Here W is 6, L is 4. When we apply the values in the formulas, we are getting M of CD and M of BC. In this frame, in the point D, there is a hinged support. In the hinged end, there will be no movement. So, we have to make DC 0. For DC, the fixed end movement is 8. When we add minus 8 with this 8, we will get 0. So, we have released DC and made it 0 and we have to give carry over from DC to CD. When we divide minus 8 by 2, we will get minus 4. Now, let us calculate the adjusted fixed end moments for AB, PA, BC and CB. There are no changes. For CD, we have to add these two values. After adding, we are getting minus 12. Now, we are going to find the story shear. To calculate the story shear, we have to find the horizontal reactions in the points B and C. First, let us take the column AB and find the horizontal reaction in the point B. In the column AB, there is symmetrical loading. In the center, there is a point load 15 kN. When we divide 15 by 2, we will get HB, which is acting towards the left side. 
Now let us take the column CD and find the horizontal reaction in the point C. In the column CD, we have symmetrical loading. The UDL 6 kN per meter is acting for the full span. But in the point C, we have fixed end movement. And in the point D, we do not have fixed end movement because we have released DC. So to find HC, we have to take movement about D. In this case, we are moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. HC is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 4 meter. So for HC, the UDL is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. The movement is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. Finally, for HC, we are getting 15 kN, which is acting towards the right side. Now let us find the story shear. To find the story shear, we have to add the horizontal reactions. In the points B and C, the reaction in the point B is acting towards the left side, so it will be positive. The reaction in the point C is acting towards the right side, so it will be negative. When we add these two values, we are getting minus 7.5 kN. Now let us find the story movement. The formula is SR HR upon 3. SR is the story shear just before we have calculated. HR is the reference height. In this frame, there are two columns, column AB and column CD. We have to select one column as the reference column. Let us take the column AB as the reference column. The height of column AB is 6 meter. So the reference height is 6. When we calculate this, we will get the story movement, which is equal to minus 15 kN meter. In the Kani's method, we have to find the rotation factor. To find the rotation factor, we have to calculate the stiffness. Let us see the formulas to find the stiffness. If the fair end is fixed, the stiffness is 4 EA upon L. If the fair end is hinged or with the roller support, the formula is 3 EA upon L. And if the fair end is continuous, the formula is 4 EA upon L. In the joint B, first let us find the stiffness for BA. For that, from the joint B, we have to look at the point A. In the point A, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula for the stiffness is 4 EA upon L. Length of BA is 6. Let us apply that. The movement of inertia for BA is 3I. So instead of I, we have to apply 3I. Finally, for the stiffness of BA, we are getting 2EI. Now let us find the stiffness for BC. For that, from the joint B, we have to look at the point C. The point C is continuous. If the fair end is continuous, the formula for the stiffness is 4EI upon L. Length of BC is 4. Let us apply that. The movement of inertia for BC is 3I. So instead of I, we have to apply 3I. Finally, for the stiffness of BC, we are getting 3EI. In the joint C, first let us find the stiffness for CB. For that, from the joint C, we have to look at the point B. The point B is continuous. 
If the fair end is continuous, the formula for the stiffness is 4 Ea upon L, length of CB is 4 and the moment of inertia for CB is 3i. Let us apply them. Finally, we are getting 3Ei. Now, let us find the stiffness for CD. For that, from the joint C, we have to look at the point D. In the point D, there is a hinged support. If the fair end is hinged, the formula for the stiffness is 3Ei upon L. Length of CD is 4. Let us apply that. Finally, we are getting 0.75 EI. Now, let us find sigma k. In the joint B, we have calculated two k values. Let us add both of them. After adding, we are getting 5 EI. In the joint C also, we have calculated two stiffness values. Let us add both of them. After adding, we are getting 3.75 EI. Now let us find the rotation factor. The formula is minus 1 upon 2 into k upon sigma k. We have calculated the values of k and sigma k values. We can apply them in the formula and find the rotation factors. We know that this frame is a sway type frame. So we have to find the displacement factor. In this frame, the height of the columns are different. The height of the column AB is 6 meter. The height of the column CD is 4 meter. Also, we have different end conditions. In the point A, we have fixed support. And in the point D, we have hinged support. So, for the displacement factor, we have to use this formula minus 3 upon 2 into kc upon sigma mc square k. Let us see how to apply the values in this formula. Let us make a table. In the table, first let us enter the story. In this frame, we have only one story. Then let us enter the column members. We have two columns, column ba and column cd. For these two columns, we have already calculated the stiffness value k. Let us apply them. Now let us find the column reduction factor c. The formula is reference height upon column height. We have selected the column ba as the reference column. So the reference height is 6. Now let us apply the column heights. Height of the column BA is 6 and the height of the column CD is 4. At the end of the column CD, we have hinged support. If the end of the column is having hinged support, we have to multiply the column height with 1.5. So here I have multiplied the column height with 1.5. After calculations for CBA and CCD, we are getting 1. Now let us find KC. For that, we have to multiply C with K. When we multiply these two values, we are getting 2EI. And when we multiply these two values, we are getting 0.75EI. Now let us find C square. When we square 1, we will get 1. And when we square 1, we will get 1. Now let us enter the end condition factor M. If the column has fixed end, M will be 1. And if the column has hinged end, M will be 3 upon 4. For the column BA, we have fixed end. So M will be 1. And for the column CD, we have hinged end. So M will be 3 upon 4. Now let us find MC square K. For that, we have to multiply MC square and K. When we multiply these three values, we will get 2EI. When we multiply these three values, 
we will get 0 0.5625 EI. Now let us find sigma mc square k. For that we have to add these two values. After adding we are getting these. Now using this formula let us find the displacement factor. In the formula let us apply the values of kc and sigma mc square k. After the calculations we are getting the displacement factors. In the Kani's method in the joints we have to make rectangles like these. Now let us enter the fixed end movements. We have to be very careful. We have to enter the adjusted fixed end movements. M of AB is minus 11.25. M of BA is 11.25. M of BC is minus 12. M of CB is 12. And M of CD is minus 12. We have made DC already 0. So, no need to enter that. In the joints, we have to add the fixed end movements. In the joint B, we have two fixed end movements. When we add them, we are getting minus 0 0.75. In the joint C also, we have two fixed end movements. When we add them, it will be 0. Now let us enter the rotation factors. The rotation factor for BA here, for BC here, for CB here and for CD here. Also let us enter the displacement factors. The displacement factor for the column AB here and for the column CD here. In the Kani's method in the joints we have to find the rotation contributions. In the joint B, we have two rotation contributions, M dash BA and M dash BC. In the joint C also, we have two rotation contributions, M dash CB and M dash CD. In the columns, we have displacement contributions. In the column AB, we have the displacement contribution, M double dash AB and in the column CD, we have the displacement contribution M double dash DC. The formula to find the rotation contribution is summation of rotation or displacement contributions at fair end plus summation of fixed end movements into rotation factor. First, let us find the rotation contribution M dash BA. M dash BA is located in the point B. For the point B, the fair ends are the point A and the point C. Initially, in the point A, M double dash AB will be 0. Also, in the point C, initially M dash CB will be 0. So, for the summation of rotation or displacement contributions at a fair end, we have 0 plus 0. The summation of fixed end movement is minus 0 0.75. The rotation factor for BA is minus 0 0.2. Finally, for M dash BA, we are getting 0 0.15. Now, let us find M dash BC. M dash BC is also located in the point B. So, for M dash BA and M dash BC, in the formula, all of the values will be same except the rotation factor. The rotation factor for BC is minus 0 0.3. After calculation for M dash BC, we are getting 0 0.225. Let us enter the values of M dash BA and M dash BC. Now let us find M dash CB. M dash CB is located in the point C. For the point C, the fair ends are the point B and the point D. In the point B, we have the rotation contribution. In the point D, initially M double dash DC will be 0. So, for the summation of rotation or displacement contributions at a fair end, 
we have 0 0.225 plus 0. The summation of fixed end movement is 0. The rotation factor for CB is minus 0 0.4. After calculation, we are getting m dash c b. For m dash c b and m dash c d, in the formula, all of the values will be same except the rotation factor. The rotation factor for c d is minus 0 0.1. Finally, for m dash c d, we are getting minus 0 0.0225. Let us apply the values of m dash c b and m dash c d. Now we are going to find the displacement contributions. The formula is story movement plus m dash b a into c b a plus m dash c d into c c d into displacement factor. First, let us find m w dash a b. The story movement is minus 15. m dash b a is 0 0.15. c b a is 1 m dash c d is minus 0 0.0225, c c d is 1. The displacement factor for the column a b is minus 1.1707. After the calculation, we are getting m double dash a b. For m double dash a b and m double dash d c, in the formula, all of the values will be same except the displacement factor. The displacement factor for the column CD is minus 0 0.439. After the calculation, we are getting M double dash DC. Let us apply the value of M double dash AB here and the value of M double dash DC here. We have finished the first iteration. Now let us start the second iteration. Now let us find M dash BA. Now in the point A we have the displacement contribution and in the point C we have the rotation contribution. The summation of the fixed end movement is minus 0 0.75. The rotation factor for BA is minus 0 0.2. Finally for M dash BA we are getting this. We know that for M dash BA and M dash BC all of the values will be same except the rotation factor. The rotation factor for BC is minus 0 0.3. After the calculation, we are getting M dash BC. Let us apply the value of M dash BA and M dash BC. Now let us find M dash CB. In the point B, we have the rotation contribution. And in the point D, we have the displacement contribution. And the fixed end movement is 0. The rotation factor for CD is minus 0 0.4. After calculation, we are getting M dash CB. We know that for M dash CB and M dash CD, in the formula, all of the values will be same except the rotation factor. The rotation factor for CD is minus 0 0.1. Finally, for M dash CD, we are getting this. Let us apply the values of m dash cb and m dash cd. Now let us find the displacement contributions. Let us apply the values of cba, ccd and story movement. Then let us apply the value of m dash ba. Then let us apply m dash cd. Then let us apply the displacement factors. After the calculation, we are getting M double dash AB and M double dash DC. Let us apply the values of M double dash AB and M double dash DC. We have finished the second iteration. Let us start the third iteration. Let us find M dash BA. In the point A, we have the displacement contribution and in the point C, we have the rotation contribution. The summation of fixed end movement is minus 0 0.75. The rotation factor for BA is minus 0 0.2 and the rotation factor for BC is minus 0 
after the calculation we are getting m dash b a and m dash b c let us apply the values of m dash b a and m dash b c now let us find m dash c b and m dash c d in the point b we have the rotation contribution and in the point d we have the displacement contribution and the fixed end moment is zero the rotation factor for cb is minus 0.4 and the rotation factor for cd is minus 0.1 after the calculation we are getting m dash cb and m dash cd let us apply the values of m dash cb and m dash cd now let us find the displacement contributions let us apply the value of m dash b a and let us apply the value of m dash c d then let us apply the displacement factors after the calculation we are getting m double dash a b and m double dash d c let us apply the values of m double dash a b and m double dash d c now we have finished the third iteration let us start the fourth iteration now let us find m dash b a and m dash b c in the point a we have the displacement contribution and in the point c we have the rotation contribution the summation of the fixed end moment is minus 0.75 the rotation factor for b a is minus 0.2 and the rotation factor for bc is minus 0.3 after the calculation we are getting m dash ba and m dash bc let us apply the values of m dash ba and m dash bc now let us find m dash cb and m dash cd in the point b we have the rotation contribution and in the point d we have the displacement contribution the summation of the fixed end moment is zero the rotation factor for cb is minus 0.4 and for cd is minus 0.1 after the calculation we are getting m dash cb and m dash cd let us apply the values of m dash cb and m dash cd now let us find the displacement contributions in the formula let us apply the values of m dash b a and m dash c d then let us apply the displacement contributions after calculation we are getting m double dash a b and m double dash d c let us apply the values of m double dash a b and m double dash d c now we have finished the fourth iteration let us start the fifth iteration here i have done the fifth iteration for the rotation contributions here for the displacement contributions here i have done the sixth iteration for the rotation contributions here for the displacement contributions i have stopped in the sixth iteration because in the fifth and sixth iterations we are getting approximately equal values the formula to find the final moments is fixed end moment plus 2 into rotation contribution at near end plus rotation contribution at far end plus displacement contribution let us make a table in the table first let us enter all of the members then let us enter the fixed end moments then let us enter 2 into near end rotation contributions in the fixed ends there will be no rotation contribution in the point a we have a fixed end so for ab the near end rotation contribution will be zero for ba the near end rotation contribution is minus 4.2258 for bc it is minus 6.3388 for cb it is minus 0.8783 and for cd it is minus 0.2196 now using the arrows we can enter the far end rotation contributions 
now let us enter the displacement contributions the displacement contributions are only available for the columns for the beam bc it won't be available so for bc and cb there will be no displacement contribution for ab and ba the displacement contribution is 22.7647 for CD, the displacement contribution is 8.5365. We have already made DC 0. So, we should not make any calculation for DC. Now, let us add these four values and find the final moments. After adding, we are getting the final moments. Now, using these formulas, we can make the free movement diagram. Using the direction of the movements, we can make the end movement diagram. Then, we can combine both of them and draw the bending movement diagram. Now, we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.